Welcome back friends to the homestead. Today we're going to be testing the cheapest multi-tool on Amazon. All right, here we go. So I guess it was a week ago or so I went on Amazon and I searched by price and I typed in multi-tool and that at that time uh, this was the cheapest of the traditional multi-tools I guess that would fit the role of, a, of your you know regular garden variety multi-tool uh, and this is what arrived. So let's take a look at it together here. So first off it came with a, um, a sheath that I would call Adequate. It does have a belt loop. Um, nothing to write home about. But uh, what do we get uh, for ten dollars? Well, it's not. <laughs> it's it's not near as bad as I thought it would be. So what we have, we're going to test. We'll test each individual tool, and we see we'll see how the cutters uh, come together and all that, and um, and uh, then we'll give our final ver verdict here. So if I didn't mention, this was nine ninety nine, uh, free shipping. Uh, so it actually feels pretty good in the hand. It's a it's it's bigger than I was thought it was going to be. You know, sometimes that stuff when you see it on the picture, uh, it's always it comes you know ordered and it's teeny tiny. But this is actually a normal size uh, tool. And my initial reaction is uh, it's got a lot of uh, quite a bit of flex play in the handle, which what is it? Is that aluminum or steel? The magnet on it? So that is. So there's aluminum scales on there, anodized green of course, but it's comfortable in the hand. I mean I've had some uh, premium ones that were a little bit more pinchy or sharp than that. So we've got our of course our needle nose pliers that uh, was pioneered. This whole design was pioneered by Leatherman of course in Portland. We've got the serrations in there. Uh, that's good for grabbing uh, round things. Anything that's round like bolts it gives you a little bit of bite and they're actually reasonably sharp. The cutters here, we'll see if that will cut. I think the, the standard for multi-tools is, I think they should be able to cut a 16-penny nail. Wouldn't you agree? Um, you know, nothing super hard, but uh, that's kind of a cool thing. It, one thing is a little bit different, is we've got an exposed spring in here, uh, which is makes a lot of noise if you listen. Kind of that springy sound, uh, but it seems to be adequate. Uh, Tool-wise, um, pretty standard here. We have a... Uh, Okay, so this looks like a fish scaler. Uh, you know, I think multi-tools are, oh no. Is that the metric system or is that inches? Hopefully that's inches. Uh, we wouldn't be able to go on if that was a metric. Well, we'll just assume, uh, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt, the, of doubt, the doubt that this, that is inches. So we've got our fish scaler, kind of small. Um, these here are fish hook removers. Um, you get a, your trout swallows the hook. You can get that down in there. Uh, and I get that hook out without doing too much damage. Looks like a number two Phillips screwdriver. Uh, we'll see how that is machined. And then on this side, we've got two more tools. We've got a, a cap lifter as well as a regular screwdriver uh, with the little thumb deal. I mean, this is actually, it is really not that bad for $10. It's really remarkable. And of course, we've got our blade. Um, is the blade sharp? Well, we can't expect too much, right, for a... Uh, it's reasonably sharp. We'll see how it cuts paper. It doesn't have much of a point on it, but that can always be remedied. And that's basically it. Everything nests in there. Uh, there is no one hand opening, but they did put the blade on the outside, uh, which is nice because if you are carrying your multi-tool in the pocket, um, it is kind of nice to do that. Unfortunately, this needs to be open to use it, which I just noticed, so that's not, not ideal. Over here on the other side, we've got, um, oh, we've got a saw. We've got a really sharp little, well, kind of sharp. It's awfully small though, a little bit short. Uh, a small screwdriver, I like that. Um, I almost would rather have the smaller one for the eyeglasses. We've got a, uh, this will, this should be a can opener right there. And we'll see how that, how that works with a, with a cap lifter and a file. I guess I wasn't expecting that. Question is, what's well, a double cut file too? And it looks to be made out of a different material. My concern with this is that, like the blade material, you know, I don't have any way to, to do the Rockwell testing on it, but the blade material looks to be the same as all the other tools. So it's probably just a garden variety stainless steel, but this, we'll find out, is that a real file uh, or is it just a fake file? But they did do a double cut. So we got our crisp cross hashes over there, a little bit finer, and then a cross hatch there and then they've also incorporated a screwdriver in the end so pretty pretty decent let's take a look at the plier the tip so one thing you want to check uh, you can really tell and what leatherman does really well is how these tips do they come together to a point because these needle nose pliers are pretty fine and you want to be able to grab things and it's actually it's 
pretty darn good. They're pretty consistent. Um, sideways, laterally, it's reasonably strong. I mean, for good grief, it's $10. Um, not too bad. Held together with Torx screws, so you can easily take that apart. There's nothing weird or proprietary there that you can't get a hold of and do yourself. And then uh, drilled out. It's light. It's very light. It actually feels pretty good in the hand. It's really not too bad. Let's try a little three-fold cutting test. Now, this is a 16-penny nail. This, uh, this is, of course, a little ambitious for any multi-tool. I think we tried that, this on the Gerber center drive, and it broke the hardened jaws. Um, but what this kind of shows is, if I can, uh, it's going to show if it's going to deform the tool, right, and how my hand's going to feel. Because it's not just about the cutters, the cutting teeth. It's about the ergonomics of the handle and how uncomfortable is it. And squeezing on this, I am getting a lot of flex and it is a little bit so hard on the hand but not too bad with gloves it wouldn't be bad but i just want to see if you know with all my strength if it's going to break or deform so we can see there that it didn't get through the the knife or the nail but you could get through that if you wanted to but again that's not that's a little ambitious what i'm more interested in is in just more practical things what we're going to cut usually things like this it's going to be like zip ties so is it precise enough can we cut is it cut cleanly yeah, pretty, pretty good machining. Cuts the zip tie just fine. And then something that's a little more suitable would be like just regular hard wire, um, like or normal wire, just mild steel. And it, uh, it indeed, it does cut. Feels good on the hand. It doesn't feel, it's not really pinching or anything. Slightly uncomfortable, but they all are. I mean, I think my favorite would be the Leatherman Wave that has a really soft, nice handle, but uh, pretty good. And of course, by harnessing the power of my electron microscope, we can get a close-up view here and see what happened. Did that, uh, all that pressure from that hard nail, uh, did it do any damage? Not too much. A, a little, little bit, tiny little, uh, you know, maybe a little deforming right there, but that's asking a lot. And, and again, you know, the, that test with the Gerber center drive, it rendered it unusable. So um, for durability wise, goes, durability wise uh, this actually, turned out pretty good. Here's a test that'll separate the men from the boys is that lateral twisting, right? If we need, let's say we're going to twist and bend something, will it uh, destroy? It takes quite a bit of force. This is hard on, on multi-tools. Can we bend a nail like that up into 90 and does it still come together uh, cleanly at the end? Um, and it does. While we're here at the vise, let's take a look at that file. I, I didn't mention it's got a hacksaw hacksaw blade on the bottom of that. Of course, this is mild steel. It should have no problem with this. Can we cut a, a nail? This would be a good time to click the, that's a bad sound. This would be a good time to click the thumbs up. You know, not every channel has access to an electron microscope. I purchased this at great expense for you guys. Okay, so we have, I can see the shavings flying. It's not super aggressive but it is getting through and it's not completely destroying the blade. Okay, well we do know it's harder uh, than a nail. Uh, one thing that I know, I, I guess I didn't realize when I was initially looking at it is it's got some pretty good jimping on there, uh, which gives good traction in the hand, but it's a little bit sharp. It's kind of uncomfortable. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, but uh, it is there. I don't see any damage on the blade, and it truly it is a hardened steel. Uh, no, no question. Um, yeah, you could you could get through something, you know, given enough time and space, of course. Let's take a look at the screwdrivers. For me and a multi-tool, of course, the most important thing next to the pliers is probably the Phillips screwdriver. And I want a number two, because that's going to be the most common size, right? So I've got a, a one-inch screw here. And the machine, it looked a little bit small to me, but it fit, seems to fit pretty tight. Uh, how is it for driving screws? Of course, this has no locking. None of the tools are going to be locking. So the angle, yeah, that's what I was kind of worried about. The angle which they deploy is... You have to be kind of careful, it's going to fold up on you. Um, but again, this is a $10 multi-tool. This is not a screwdriver. Um, and usually you're not going to be driving something like this. You're going to be tightening something that's an emergency. Now that that screw's buried in there, we're going to see what type of a grind is on that Phillips bit. If it wants to strip out or not. That's pretty good. Uh, with a little bit of little pressure, I mean, we're, we're seated in there. That's a soft screw. 
But that uh, feels pretty good. Let's take a look at that knife. Actually, I probably misspoke. The most important thing is the knife and the, the knife and the pliers, then the number two screwdriver. Small knife, good blade. Kind of reminds me, doesn't it look like the old, the, that blade shape that was on that old, the old pocket knives, those trifolds, those charade old timers. That was my granddad's pocket knife of choice. I'm not overly concerned about the sharpness of the blade, uh, but how does it feel in the hand? It's a good shape because it's got, the way it's uh, bigger on the top, um, it gives you kind of a lot to purchase onto, and it's got those plastic deals in there, which are a little bit more gentle on the hand, kind of spreads that, spreads that weight. But what I'm looking for is how much is the tool flexing? Is it, can I deliver, you know, power to the cut? Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's actually a, a, it's better than many uh, using the knife because of that shape. It is a good shape. I don't know if that was by design or just happened by accident. <laughs> I mean, how much R&D can they put into a $10 multi-tool? All right, well, that's, I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, what do we have? We got the fish scaler, nothing we can do with that. The regular screwdrivers. Let's, let's give a go on that, um, that can opener. All right, any guesses what I'm having for lunch today? Mrs. W, I told you she was coming back to, uh, yesterday. And she did, and I had forgot. She had told me that she ha has to go back for three more days. So Jack and I are in charge of the boss baby again. Fortunately, my mom <laughs> is coming out to, to lend a hand. So uh, I appreciate that. Can openers maybe not quite so important as they used to be. It seems like a lot of, I don't know that folks eat canned food as much as they used to. Um, and a lot of the cans now have the, the pull-off tops, you know, the tabs. So you don't really need that uh, so much. But... Uh, We'll see here. So a good can, a good can opener will have kind of a little nice design there that will hook under that lip, um, and where you can get under there. And this is not a good can opener. Um, guy'd be pretty hungry by the time you got that deal open. I can't get that to go in there. Oh, there we go. No, oh, I got it. Just took a little bit. It's not. Um, it's not the best design. I'm not. I'm having trouble. Let's see, maybe it's user error. I'm having trouble getting it to hook on the on the bottom. There we go. Okay, so it will work, but it's not very good. It really is pretty terrible, actually. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, I've got the Gerber center drive here. Just to do a little comparison. Does it have a does it have a can opener? I don't know. Let's see. I do like this tool. Gerber's probably, they probably moved on from can openers. I, I, I don't, well, is that a can opener? I guess it might be. This is actually a really nice tool. I don't know if that's supposed to be a can opener, but it sure works good. It's a whole different deal there. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Much stronger. But how many... That's, that's, what do these cost? Probably close to $100 or $10. So that's, a can opener is not a big deal for me. I mean, what are we looking at here? We're looking for something that's probably, that we want to throw in the truck, in the glove box, or, you know, maybe give to your kids. I mean, you don't want to turn your kids loose out in the forest with one of these, because um, you know that's not going to come back. So, um, I mean, they do have a place, or a tackle box. Of course, this would be ideal for a tackle box. But, yeah, I mean, I have better luck just, once I get it started, just pushing that in there. So take it for what it's worth. It's not the best, but you could, you could, uh, you're not going to go hungry. Let me tell you that. So let's give that wood cutting saw a little test there. That, that's another one that I actually, I do like to have in a multi-tool is a, is a little saw, uh, mostly just for little pruning things or just cutting little things. Uh, my, right off the bat, it's a little bit short. That's kind of a, the downfall of it. It's going to make it difficult to use. This is a little ambitious, but uh, not unlike what you'd find. This is, of course, we're cutting uh, Douglas fir, which is a, not a hard wood. It's a good little saw. It's actually the wood saw is a better quality than that metal saw. It's even got, you see, it must have a little bit of um, 
of offset in the teeth because it's not binding. And that's a pretty long cut. Like a saw that's not, the teeth are not set properly. Well, you'll get down in here once that back of that blade gets buried, uh, you can't hardly move it. We've all experienced that, right? Um, and the fact that it doesn't, that it's free in there, uh, means that they did put, they did, it is done right, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's better than expected, actually. That's pretty, a pretty good little saw. So how did it hold up after, there's some pretty abusive things, especially bending that nail over. Did, is it falling apart or anything? So there's, there's a little bit of play in the, uh, in the jaws, but that's the way it was when I first opened or took it out of the box. So that hasn't really changed. It's not super precise. It's not what you're gonna find on a Leatherman, but it's adequate. But I don't see, I, mean, I don't see that any problems with the teeth coming together. Those seem to be about the way they way were. There may be a little, may, might have bent a little bit, but I kind of expect that. Um, it opens and closes easily. The tools come out easily. They're arranged in a pretty decent way. I, again, I like to have that knife on the back. I'd rather have the Phillips screw on the outside rather than this fish scaler. That's gonna be something that very few people are gonna use. Um, I don't know that we really need to test the screwdrivers. I think we have a pretty good idea. Those are, that's pretty standard stuff there. Um, we got three different screwdriver options. The saws work good. The file was definitely hardened. The blade, I don't know how that steel is. I wouldn't expect too much, but it felt good in the hand and it cuts well. And I guess you could tighten these things up. You could, you know, you take it apart, do what you wanted to. And overall, I mean, it's, it's way better than I thought it would be. I, I thought it was going to be a joke. Um, and, but it's not, it, it doesn't even look that bad. Like you wouldn't be completely humiliated if you broke that out in front of your buddies. Um, I mean, of course it's not a Leatherman or a Gerber, but uh, it is, um, man, for 10 bucks, free shipping. I mean, it's, what little kid wouldn't like to have that? Wouldn't that be a great gift for, for a young boy? You know, go out and tie a, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it has a place to put a lanyard. I guess you could figure that out on your own. Yeah, if you want to send multi-tools out or tools out with kids, I'll give you some advice. Tie it to them <laughs> if, you, if you want it to come back. So I've been looking it over pretty close and I don't see any issues. So what's my take? Well, does it give me the fizz? I guess that's probably we need to, to go there. No, it does not give me the fizz, but I didn't expect it to. Um, it, is, it is what it is. It's just an inexpensive, low budget multi-tool that, that exceeded my expectations. So for just a beater or a glove box deal, it's good. It's handy to have. I'll tell you what, I, I'm gonna keep it. Uh, I'm gonna put it in, uh, I'm gonna keep it in the drawer by, by my, in my desk uh, because I'm always needing a pair of pliers or a screwdriver, you know, working on little things. And I, I usually have my multi-tools in other places and I'm just gonna keep it there for that. So for, for just throwing in a desk drawer or in your junk drawer, glove box, um, pretty darn good. So that, that's basically it. I'll put a link to that if you wanna get one. Uh, also in this video, I have hidden a $50 uh, or a redeem, redemption code or code for a $50 gift certificate for Amazon. Um, I'm not going to make it easy to find. So you got to go back to the video if you haven't seen it already. And the first person that finds that, that goes to Amazon, you can redeem it and you've got $50 and you can buy, um, you could buy uh, five of these, or you could buy a nice, a nice multi-tool. I'd probably recommend you get yourself a, a Leatherman Wave or that Gerber Center Drive is a pretty nice multi-tool because it's got that one hand opening, uh, which is really nice. I, I like that. But it's a tool a guy should have. Um, I, you know, I've never been a huge fan of them. As I, you guys know, I don't carry one because they're all a little bit bulky. And I think not, I think primarily because if I was on a job site, um, I probably would be carrying one, especially if I was doing stuff like mechanical, if, like, if I was a tin knocker or electrician or plumber um, or any type of like facility maintenance, stuff like that, I would definitely carry one because uh, you're away from your tools. And sometimes, you know, things can be fixed or repaired by just the turn of a screw uh, or the cutting of a wire. Uh, and that can be really frustrating if you got your tools at a, another location and it wastes a lot of time. So here, you know, beings I have, I'm usually working at home and I have access to the shop. I, when I want a screwdriver, I'm not typically gonna grab one of these, but they do have a place. I do keep one in all the van, the, or the van and the glove box and I, in the tackle boxes. You guys know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So that's it. Let me know uh, in the comments, fill in the blank. 
the cheapest whatever, what would you like to see me order or review on Amazon? We've done the cheapest gas powered chainsaw. We've done, we've done a whole bunch of stuff, drills and different things, and they're kind of fun. And the videos, they get millions of views. So I, there is a, that incentive for me to do them, and I think they're just kind of fun. Um, and they're easy for me to do, especially on days to, uh, like today where I've got to look after the boss baby. So keep us in your prayers. Um, I have not been doing Manly Manners because I lost the Manly Manners book, but I just reacquired it. I, I found it. I had stuffed it in a shirt pocket when we uh, went down to Thunder Ranch. So we will be doing uh, Manly Manners. That will be coming up too. So look for that. So good luck on the gift certificate. Um, I, I, that's all. We'll see you guys. On, we'll see you guys on the next video.